<coughs> okay, in this lesson, uh, section 4.4 out of the text, uh, we're going to go over how to graph uh, as functions, the sine and the cosine function. Um, and we'll talk about all the different types of transformations that we can do with them, things that affect the amplitude and the period of the function. Uh, and we'll look at a couple of application problems uh, at the end dealing with sine and, and cosine functions. Okay, so up first, let's look at how we can graph uh, the sine function. And uh, typically, as with any brand new function, the way that we normally go about graphing it is we create a, a table of values. Let's make an x, y table of values. And for the x's, the x's are uh, the values that we're going to put into the sine function. The x's are angle values. Okay, um, So let's think about the, the unit circle. Uh, we can pick any angles that we want off of that unit circle. Um, I'm going to pick five of them, and I'm going to pick five of the, the easier to plot, kind of easier to, to calculate points. I'm going to do the every 90 degree points, or in radians, every half pi radians. So I'm going to go with zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. So I'm going to go one time around the circle, uh, stopping at every half pi, or every 90 degrees. Okay. So, to fill out the y value of the chart, I need to know what's the sine of 0 radians, what's the sine of pi over 2 radians, what's the sine of pi radians, etc. Uh, and if you recall, we've built up over the last couple of days that uh, the sine as a function, sine is just the y over the r, which in the unit circle is just the y value. Um, so we just need to know what's the y value of the point at zero radians. The y value of the point there is zero. What's the y value of the point at pi over two radians? It's one. What's the y value of the point at pi radians? Zero. What's the y value of the point at three pi over two radians? It's negative one. And what's the y value of the point at two pi radians? And it's zero. Um, by picking these points for the x, these values to substitute in, I've um, guaranteed that I get the zeros and the ones, the easy points to plot. I can avoid all the, the fractions and the radicals. So, I mean, really, I can pick anything. I just picked the easy ones. So, let's just kind of say it like that. Um, okay, so now we're ready to, to come to our graph. We need to put these points on our graph. Now, I am using just a, a regular... Um, rectangular uh, graph. I'm going to rescale the axes, however, uh, just label and mark up the axes, however, so that they match these points uh, rather nicely, so it'll just kind of look um, appealing, I guess. Uh, but just kind of keep in mind that things are rescaled a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go maybe every two lines here, just because I want to spread it out so we can see it well. Um, Maybe I'll do the same thing here. Well, maybe not. I'm just going to keep these as they are. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this first one, I mean, obviously this is zero on the x-axis, I'm going to call this the line where pi over 2 is, this the line where pi is, this is the line where 3 pi over 2 is, and this is the line where 2 pi is. Over here would just be the negatives of those. And then so, of course, this is, we'll just keep with this being 1 and negative 1. So we'll just count uh, normal on the y-axis, okay? Um, but, but just kind of keep in mind the, the distortion that we've got here. You know, pi is about 3.14, you know, so technically it'd be about right there on the graph. So it's kind of stretched a little bit. Um, but it's labeled, so it'll be fine. So let's plot our points. We've got a point at 0, 0, right at the origin. We've got a point at pi over 2, 1. Yeah. Pi is at 0. Um, 3 pi over 2 is at negative 1. 2 pi is back at 0. And we get a graph that looks kind of 
kind of like that. Now, same pattern of points, what we have here is just what we call a wave function. This wave is just going to now repeat and just kind of keep repeating. It's going to repeat the other direction too. So I can continue this pattern of points out to the left. So there's your sine curve. It's basically knowing um, these kind of what I call five key points. Okay, you know these five points and we can plot a sine graph. Essentially it starts at the origin and goes up one back to the zero line, down one back to the zero line. So it is at the zero line, up one to zero, down one to zero. It would continue up one, back to zero, down one, back to zero, and you just kind of keep doing that. Okay. Now let's look at a cosine graph. We'll do the same thing. We'll build this up a little bit faster though. We want the same kind of table of values. As with the last one, I'm going to pick the same x values. Okay. Um, cosine. Recall that um, the cosine is defined to be x over r which in this case is just x. So we're going to look at all these different angle values and we want to know what's the x value of the ordered pair coordinate point at these angle values. Okay, so um, 0 plugged in for x, cosine of 0 radians. At 0 radians the x value is 1. Cosine of pi over 2. At pi over 2 radians the x value is 0. Um, cosine of pi, the x value at pi is negative 1. Cosine of 3 pi over 2, the x value at 3 pi over 2 is 0. And cosine of 2 pi, the x value at 2 pi is 1. Okay. So just like, <clears throat> like in the sine graph, we had five key points. These are our five key points for cosine same numbers, they're ones and zeros and negative ones, they're just uh, different places is all. I'm going to go ahead and mark up my axis the same way so the first one I'll mark for pi over 2, then pi, then 3 pi over 2 then 2 pi, negatives on the other side And we'll just go 1 and negative 1 there. Okay, plotting the points. The first order pair point is 0, 1. And then at pi over 2, we're at 0. At pi, we're at negative 1. 3 pi over 2, we're back at 0. And at 2 pi, we're up at 1. Kind of looks like a V, but it's essentially it's the same exact wave as we saw on the sine graph. Um, so it does need to curve as you draw it, kind of like that. Pattern continues over here. It's going to come down, down, back up, back up. So there's our cosine wave. Okay. Again, knowing these five key points, cosine starts up one, so it starts off the origin. That's how it's a little different than the sine graph. Starts up one, then down to zero, down one, back up to zero, back up one. Those five point pattern, and then you just repeat, and it keeps on going. Okay, now let's spend some time talking about how um, we can change the appearance of the sine and the cosine graph because they aren't all going to look like that. We can um, multiply them by numbers in, either in front or inside the function. We can add and subtract things. So <clears throat> how can we change the appearance of the graph? Well, um, two things we can do rather easily is amplitude and period. Amplitude is the height it's 
maybe defined as the height of the sine or cosine curves is always positive. Okay, so how tall is the, the sine or cosine wave? That's kind of the amplitude. Um, the period is the length of the sine or cosine curve. So it is, now I know you're thinking length, that it, uh, its length is infinite, it goes on forever. Well, more specifically, it's how long, oops, how long before it repeats. Okay. Um, so for example, for example, go back to this cosine curve. Um, its period is 2 pi. From here to here we see the entire cosine curve. After that it just would start to repeat. It'd come back down and down and up and up. We'd see the exact same thing. You see it over here. Every 2 pi units the cycle repeats. That's its period length. Um, the amplitude The amplitude is one. It's its height above or its height below um, the x-axis. Or you can think of it as its uh, maybe total change in height, two units, but cut in half. So it's one unit.